Hi, welcome to another video, part 3 of this BMS. So you see in front of you, I managed to get this Murata DC to DC converter secured to a PCB. It's running a SOT23 300 milliamp regulator. And then from there, we've got a SOT23 5 pin microchip ADC 12 bit. Two communication lines. Although this Murata DC to DC power supply, 5 volts in and out. So 5 volts and ground, totally isolated from the output. You can ground the live or ground the neutral and it doesn't upset this DC to DC converter. But as one of my viewers, Jonathan, pointed out, if I string a load of these down each cell, I'm going to have problems when I connect the communication lines. So I've now ordered four I2C digital isolators. Hopefully they'll arrive tomorrow. You need less than 5 volts to get 5 volts out. So there must be some sort of boost converter in there. With 5 volts you get over 5 out. Which is handy because I can run it into a 5 volt regulator. But I read the data sheet for this chip today. This analog to digital converter. And it says you can run this chip from a 2 milliamp. 4096 voltage reference so I might order some of them but not for this chip oh, more about that later this chip is a disaster so that's the setup positive ground everything else disconnected is just about this isolator and the ADC still my 32 bit microcontroller Fortunately I've got some of these precision 2K resistors used, as, used to pull up the I2C clock and data lines. And because of one of the microchips, I think it's the EFH, the I2C is faulty in the hardware, it doesn't issue a stop command, absolute rubbish, they shouldn't be selling the chips. I'm using Microelectronica's trusty software controlled I2C. So that's the setup. Now let me put this expensive meter onto this cell to see what is the real voltage. So at the moment this is in a wild one. It's getting the voltage from the I2C, displaying it and then incrementing this number and going around doing it again. And it's, that's happening every 50 milliseconds and you can see we've got a rock steady result. I'm actually very happy. Turn this meter on. No fluctuating floating points as I had with the internal ADC. Not to mention the hideous amount of code you need to get the internal ADC working. And when you do get it working, I didn't think it was that accurate. What a mammoth task to try and get that ADC working. I say, now forget it, just go and buy yourself a one pound ADC converter and use that. Look at this, brilliant. And if you watch the video from last night, last night with the internal ADC, I deleted this last place because it was all over the shop. Right, so I hope you can see this meter. I will measure this cell. If I get the ground in the right place. There we are. I think my arms are making a shadow. There we are. Three point. That's it. This battery voltage is dropping a touch. 3.33. I was going to say 9. But this battery voltage is now 3.335 volts. And we have got 3.33. Sort of 1, 2 and 3. So that's accurate to a plus or minus sort of three to four millivolts. You can see it's actually fluctuating between four and five here. So 3.335, 3.332, 3.333. Just 
just with a couple of SOT23 boards stuck together, didn't have to break them apart. There's a DC to DC converter, a 5 volt regulator and one microchip a 12 bit ADC. So what's the problem with this 12 bit ADC? Here's a quick look at the code. It took me 15 minutes to figure it out. Didn't think the data sheet was that great. So this is Microelectronica's software controlled I2C. I'll put the C file on GitHub and put a link in the show more. I2C start. You write to it, these four bits are preset 1001. The address but default is 101. And then I've got a note when this read write, when it's set to one, it's a read operation. When it's set to zero, it's a write operation. So I'm writing to the chip, restarting, and reading the first register and the second register, issuing an acknowledge there and no acknowledge on the end. And I2C stop. That's it, I've got my 12 bits of data, the high byte and the low byte. And then down the bottom, so battery voltage equals this float times the battery voltage. So like before, it would normally be five volts divided by 4096. But the output of this regulator is, I've got it written down here, 4.980. There we are, there's a note, 4.980. So 4.980 divided by 4096, which is the 12 bit ADC, gives you that increment. So 0 0.0012 millivolts per increment at 4.98 volts. However, if I buy, as recommended in the data sheet for this ADC, if I buy a 4096 voltage reference, then I'm knocking off one volt from the top that I don't need, which will make the accuracy come up even more. So you can see at the beginning, battery voltage equals voltage sample high shifted left eight places and then plus voltage sample low yeah do the maths display it using my new floating point system and i am really pleased with the result so what's wrong this is what's wrong so, so you know what component i'm talking about here's the data sheet microchip low power less than 2 milliamps. Look at the spec, 250 microamps max, that's when it's measuring and it drops down to 5 nanoamps on standby. So that's the continuous load you have on your battery. That's actually pretty good. Remember a 4K resistor on a 3.3, 3.4 volt cell, you've got 800 microamps. So, you know, going for three over three times this. This draws a lot less current than any voltage divider. So the part, MCP3221, and it's a SOC 23 five pin. Works up to 100 kilohertz and 400 kilohertz via fast mode. Here we are, look, up to eight devices. I saw this, thought, well, I'll have some of these. That was my first mistake. I bought four, didn't read the small print, on RS components, there's two in each pack. Ah, oh, they're roughly one pound 11p each, including that. I didn't buy four, I bought four packs, that's eight. Ah, oh. so that's wasted over four pound. Probably wasted the whole lot. Let me sc scroll down to page 16. So I was reading this. So it just said you can have eight addresses, which is odd because on a seven bit I2C, it's not 8 because the lowest bit, bit 0, is a read or write. So you've only got 7 address bits, not 8. So usually on I2C, you, on the 7 bit address, you can have 127 devices. But you just saw they quote 8. Come down here, look, this is when I'm learning to program it. These are the device bits, 1001 as you saw. Then you've got address, so 7654, address 321, and this last zero. 
So this address 2, address 1, address 0, there your 8 addresses. It can be a 0 or a 1 there, 0 or 1 there, 0 or 1 there. That's 8 addresses. And I read right there. And it says here, what's wrong? Sounds great so far, doesn't it? When set to 1, so when the read write is set to a 1, a read operation is selected. When set to a 0, a write operation is selected. That's normal, isn't it? There are no writable registers on the MCP3221. Therefore, this bit must be set to a 1 in order to initiate a conversion. What? No writable registers? Well, how do I change the address then? And my heart sunk. <laughs> what do you think? Leave some comments below. Oh, the what a load of garbage. Is this just poorly written? Or have I just wasted more money? <laughs> Wasting money on loads of these precision resistors. Although I've needed two for these pull-ups. Look down the bottom. I could not believe my luck when I came down to here. I thought, what a load of BS. So be careful if you're buying this microchip product. This is as bad as the amount of code you need to get their ADCs working. They just do not want you to use their stuff. Look at this BS. The default option address. A5 showed up the top. 101 one. then you get the read write bit well what about the other addresses a0 a1 a2 a3 etc etc default option a5 contact microchip factory for other address options what so i can't go to my supplier lot rs components farnell digikey mauser because they're all the same address so you might think the PIC32MZ has five lots of I2C communication channels. Yeah, but the hardware, they, it, they don't issue an I2C stop. And they still send out the chips with, with garbage faults and let you pay over a tenner each. So I'm using Microelectronica's software controlled I2C, which does the job and gets around Microchip's hardware buttons. So I've got to hand it to Microelectronica. Their software controlled I2C makes reading a voltage really easy. So this, yeah, this took like 15, 20 minutes to get this going. No cheating, no looking up code, just read the data sheet. And the more I read, the more I was horrified. Every, <laughs> I do not believe my luck. So if you want a cheap ADC converter, because they are cheap, they're fairly accurate, but rock steady and consistent. That's the microchip part number and the RS part number. If you want to use one per microcontroller, this is certainly the chip for you. If you want to use more than one, this is an absolute joke. So eight addresses available. Yeah, not in one chip. Eight from the blooming manufacturers. Ugh, garbage. Microchip need to address their wording on their data sheets. Utter garbage. So what isn't garbage is this Murata DC to DC converter. At five volts in, you get more than five volts out, which is handy so you can use a regulator or as I'm gonna purchase, a voltage reference. So I've moved one step forward and two steps backwards. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about microchip ADCs. And as I say, I'm making progress, just slow. As before, if you wanna add some comments, just leave them below. I'll put the C file on GitHub, put, it in, put a link in the show more. If you wanna donate a coffee for the C file, the link is also in the show more. Thanks for watching.